All right, welcome to the Math 63 online course. I figured this would be best because there's so much information to go through. Uh, just to give you a video presentation of the class, a video introduction to the class, may I say, because uh, there's multiple websites and multiple components here. But anyways, first of all, just say welcome. My name is Arkady Hanjiev. I'll give you a full photo shot of myself just a bit here. Um, so let's just begin here. Let me go to this and jump to this. Uh, I made up a little resource page, which is uh, on the course management system that we use as well. But before we get there, um, I wanted to tell you that this will be a video that I will post on YouTube as well. The way you get there, if you want to see it again, you can just click on it as a link from the email that I'm going to send you. Or you can go to YouTube. Uh, you're going to search for something called Math 4B. And the reason why it is is because I taught a Math 4B class years ago and I just sort of kept the same channel. Just kind of been changing the videos in that channel. Then you can select the, the default YouTube icon. And you're going to click on Playlists. And uh, this right here, M63, means Math 63. And you're going to go to Math 63 Lectures. And I titled this one the Online Class Introduction. So let's just do that now. Real quickly here, let me pull up my internet browser here. So going to YouTube. Uh, I'm going to search for Math. Or B and there's the default because I haven't made a picture yet for this you can subscribe to this channel if you like here or you can just go to here and click on playlists because I teach several classes so when you click on this one uh, there's the other classes that I teach here but you click on math 63 and hey okay so one mistake already here it should be towards the top not towards I think it's on the bottom still yeah I didn't move it here I'll move it just a bit here it should say online class introduction and it's going to be up here towards the front okay and we'll get to all these things a little bit later on just at least want to show you where the video can be found at all right the other thing I want to just show you before we begin is um, let me get you to the portal page. All right, so here are the class I'm teaching this semester. Here is ours, Math 63C03. And if you go to it, here's a little uh, picture of myself here with a surprise dinner made by my family. Um, just a quick about myself here. Um, I went to Fresno State for my bachelor's degree. Actually, I went to City College as well, Fresno City College, uh, to almost get my associate's degree. I was there for a year and a half, and then uh, there was a way for me to transfer to Fresno State. I did that. I spent another two years there at Fresno State, <clears throat> got my bachelor's degree, and then got a scholarship to go to Fresno Pacific University to get my master's degree. So I figured, hey, if I have a scholarship, I'm going. So uh, it took me another two years, and I got a master's degree in, in um, mathematics. So I've been teaching at West Hills College for over 10 years now. Uh, taught at the high school level for about six years as well. And so now that's the picture of me enjoying a wonderful family dinner here, a surprise birthday dinner made by my family. Anyway, so let's go to the course itself. Um, what I'm really going to have up here is uh, just, um, this is just a, uh, it's on the syllabus, but just a uh, schedule of the class, just real quick here. The, it has the vacation days of the semester, what chapters we're going through each week, and there's some more vacation days. The important part right here would be the midterm exam. Right there, there's the midterm. It's on the 21st of October. It's at 3 to 5 p.m. Now, in P3, so you do have to come on campus. 
uh, or it has to be proctored by a really an accredited institution somehow um, so again email me all about those I will have some correspondence to you about this as well soon all right and then finals week I will still have to get to put a schedule together when the final will be but again it'll be a proctored exam so you have two proctored exams during the semester <clears throat> all right and towards the bottom there's the syllabus for the course and there's this resource page that I'm that I have up already here but let's go to uh, the syllabus itself So it gives us the information here, gives us the title of the textbook, and we'll talk about the whole concept of a textbook, my name, and office hours, and we'll talk about that as well. A lot of stuff we'll talk about. Uh, I do want to give you to one particular spot that we need to talk about here is uh, the whole concept of attendance and the whole concept of the grading scale and if there's any other questions on the syllabus please email me here but uh, the whole concept of attendance here since this is not a face-to-face -face class there's an initial thing you need to do you need to go and sign up for the xyzhomework.com site that is the site that we're going to do all all our work on that's where grades will be kept that's where everything will be stored at and you need to do this by wednesday of the first week of class all right, um, a little bit of leniency, I know, because Monday was not a, a full day. So initially, yes, you do need to sign up this. If you're not signed up, I will have to drop you from the course. And then throughout the semester, since, again, I can't see whether you're attending class or not attending class here, if you basically start kind of since fa failing to complete your work but completely if you do not complete two chapter exams or you just completely skip them or skip the midterm exam that would be grounds to drop you if you do really want to drop from the course again make sure you drop yourself because your academic record is really your responsibility all right there's the set for the midterm exam and uh, the grading scale, this is, uh, I'd like to explain this to you here. So we have the online homework, 200 points for the whole entire class. We have the chapter tests that are gonna be worth 200 points. The midterm, which is worth 200 points, and the final, which is worth 200 points. So a grand total of 800 points. But here's, here's it right here. It says, in addition to your overall score, whatever you get here, the average of your midterm and your final must be at least 70% in order to earn a grade of C or above. So really what I want to preclude from happening is people or certain persons getting almost 100% on their online and chapter tests. When they come and take the midterm exam, they get 10%. And so yes, you do have to pass the midterm and the final with an average of 70% or above. All right, that would be enough there. Let's jump to this resource page here, and we'll do the rest of the presentation from here. All right, so this homework.com site, let's go to it. Let's see how you can sign up. Um, this is the publisher site that goes directly with the textbook that we have. <clears throat> um, it There's a guide for new students, if you like, and absolutely open that up because it will be a helpful guide. To register as a new student, I'm just going to go to the first page here. You do have to register first name, last name. Again, your login has my email address in here already here. And I can't go on beyond this page just because it's not going to work for me. You'll know that this is already a registered email here. Um, you do need two things in order to register. You need an, an access code and then you need a course ID number and those two things. So how do you get an access code? You get it one of two ways. You either buy a new textbook, a physical textbook, and when you buy a new physical textbook, the access code is going to be inside, underneath the front cover of the textbook. Or you can purchase the access 
code right here. And so you go to the online store, and it's called the All Access Pass, I guess. They renamed it just slightly. Uh, but you go there and you purchase that. Let me go back just a little bit here. All right. Once you've done that, then you can log in. All right, these are the class I've taught here. Let me get to our class here, fall 15. And so this is the class you wanna sign up for. It's West Hills Community College, 2015, fall, math 63C03. You also have a course ID number, which you need. And this course ID number is 6940. And that will get you into this class. All right, it is on the resource page right here, 6940. <clears throat> so that's the course ID number that you need to, to have for the course. Again, the access code, just real quick as a recap here, this the course ID number, 6940 you need. The access code you either get by buying a physical text, a new physical textbook, or going online, purchasing it. I believe the access code by itself is about forty dollars and I believe the textbook is around thirty six dollars or so a new textbook is around thirty six dollars all right with that in mind let's go to all the different features of the course here so let me zoom this in a little bit here all right, as you start off, uh, here is all the assignments. It's the assignments calendar. So oh, here's all the assignments that you were going to do during the semester, except for the midterm and the final. That's not included in this right here. All right, but before we get there, let's go over uh, these chapter headings here. All right, first of all is the entry guide. This is uh, how things are to be entered into the uh, answers for the online and this is something called a math quill math quill is just a little program that makes it easier to enter m math um, numbers and equations here so whenever you're completing a XYZ homework assignment if you click on the window to enter and you see this little up arrow what that means is there is something called a math quill that if you click on it it'll show up something like this now Yours will be even more elaborate because you're Math 63 students here. But really, you have fractions if you need to. Here's your exponents. So square roots, any kind of root. You got your absolute value, parentheses, the pi, um, infinity, and then the DNE, which really just means does not exist. Okay, and then you got all your uh, moving tools as well as uh, your cancel tool here and your save tool so there's all the math stuff you really need we'll go to we'll go to one as well here so sometimes it is very very cumbersome to enter like if you want to enter something like this this is what's going to actually look like so maybe that's not what you really want to enter because the whole point of this is not to learn a computer language for entering math notation so yeah most of the time if you can probably use the math quill unless it's something easy to enter there is also a preview button each time and this will be a good thing to do when you enter when you click the preview button just to make sure this is exactly what you want to enter and as you look over here this is what the computer is saying that you've entered on this side all right then you'll have something called syntax okay or syntax air and so in that case um, if syntax okay that what that just means is this answer makes sense it's the type of answer you would expect so if you are um, let's say uh, solving for X and X has to be an integer and you're putting in something like this it's going to say syntax error that's all it means okay so on down here just basic operations um, here, the caret key right here, this is the little um, thing that's above the 6 key that we use that for exponents. This little asterisk, this is above the 8 key, that's for multiplication. I think everybody else is, makes sense here. Uh, the division 
is just the slash key. Whenever we talk about relations now, uh, if you're talking about equal to, of course the equal to button. If you want to say not equal to, what you're really going to do is you can put exclamation point and uh, equal sign. That just means not equal to. Again, all these different symbols. What I would recommend is you print this page out and just sort of have in front of you as you're doing the homework, as you get more and more comfortable with uh, with the notation here. All right, the rest of these, the functions right here. So this is why they have the, the math quill is because you really don't need to know SQRT parentheses is you're putting in a square root. At this point, I would probably use the math quill, but if you are inclined to write it out in symbols here and try to make sense of it in symbols, go for it. ABS is the absolute value. So ABS parentheses negative five would actually get you the absolute value of negative five. All right, and here's the other little symbols that are on the math palette. Pi, there's the E symbol as well. Infinity. <clears throat> And which is actually just a lowercase o and another lowercase o. That means infinity. All right, and then just some examples here. Uh, I like to use this one right here. Rational expression number one. If you have a two on top, you put a slash line, and then in parentheses you put 3x plus 5. That's what you've written. If you put a two on top, divide by 3x plus 5 and you forget the parentheses completely, notice what happens. It changes the whole entire question around. It's now 2 thirds x plus 5. So be very mindful where parentheses go. Parentheses are very important here. If you have, as we get into the rational expressions here, <clears throat> uh, x plus 5 and x minus 3, if you want to put both of those terms on the bottom, then you would have to put actually an extra set of nested parentheses to say, okay, that whole denominator is going to be in the bottom. Anyway, so there's the math. Quill. All right, let's go to, just let's go look at chapter, uh, let's go to chapter two first, because that's the one that we, uh, let's go to chapter one. Chapter one first. On, oh, you know what? Sorry, let me. So let me do this here. Let me give you the student view of it here because then it'll be a little more easier. <clears throat> All right, if you wanted to go by chapters like this and kind of work your way down, that's fine too. You could also work your way on the calendar only, and I'll show you that in just a bit. So when you click on chapter one, notice you don't have the full entire chapter here. Notice you only have a chapter 1.4 because that's all we do from chapter 1. Uh, the reason for it is because of the number of days in the class. Uh, I will assume that you've known uh, chapter 1.1 to 1.3 already from Math 61 from Algebra 1. It's very, very basic concepts and we really don't have time in the course to go over them. You may want to read over them just to familiarize yourself with it, but there'll be no assignments due for those sections. Also, 1.5 and 1.6 same thing. There's uh, some sections we assume that you know, or I assume that you would know, but they're really um, <clears throat> not really part of the class. What I really want to do from chapter one is just review factoring with you. And with this one, next to each of these, there'll be um, videos associated with it. So this is called a mini lecture, and we'll see a different way we can actually get to this lecture as well. Uh, and there'll be the the mini lecture is really just a five or ten minute illustration of the section uh, by the author. And that's what he does. He'll, he'll just give you a quick... The more factoring, I don't know why it's on here because it's the same exact lecture. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. More factoring is uh, just him talking about factoring in general. So you have these, it's almost like the extra little piece that the author adds to it. Okay, in order to go to the exercises or the homework you can click on here there's also a forum uh, whenever you have questions that you really are stuck in on the online homework there's a place you can click to post to the forum and students if you want to answer other students' problem being a good Samaritan also go for it that'll be that'll be okay to do so as well all right also you should see chapter 9 is missing there's no chapter 9 because uh, uh, the Math 63 course 
Again, there's not enough time to cover everything. So after chapter eight, the instructor or really West Hills College has to decide, okay, because of the content, uh, which is more important, chapter nine or chapter 10. So we think that chapter 10 is a more important concept than chapter nine. And you'll see chapter 10 more in higher mathematics than you see chapter nine. So we've cut off chapter nine out of the course. All right, chapter two, that's a full chapter. So let me at least let you see a full chapter. There it is. <clears throat> so starting with chapter two, what you have is you have chapter exams that you have to do. So again, chapter one, there's a little video explaining just real quick here, 10, I mean five, maybe to seven minutes. Just a quick mini lecture on 2.1. And to hit to the homework, you go here. All right, let's go back up. All right, an uh, easier way to get to the homework questions, if you just want to get to the homework questions here, you can click on the day that it's due and notice underneath the calendar, what happens is you can get directly to the question right away. So just hit, there's my 2.1, there's my 2.2 that's due, there's two, three, two, four. So there's that. Also, you can adjust uh, how many weeks you want to show at a time. So if you want to show 10 weeks at a time, if you want to show the whole entire semester, that's fine too. There's, can't fit on the screen here, but there's uh, really the whole entire semester right there, minus the final exam week. So these are all the homework that is due. Notice that uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of time here to about Thursday or so to get settled with the XYZ homework stuff. Start on the homework and 1.4 needs to be completed this Friday. At least that it should be done. And then starting Monday, which is all chapter two, keep on going. All right, you should also see that um, chapter two Chapter three, really, in chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, this gets intense right in here. So all of September and into the beginning of October is pretty intense. And then uh, there's a little bit of a relaxing period. Chapter six is also intense because every single day things are due. So there's, there's a push really to get all the way to the midterm. And then after that, it a little bit relaxes. It really doesn't relax because the concepts in chapter seven now tend to get a little more difficult. Now they're more difficult and more challenging. So yeah, you probably will need the extra time to think about it. All right, the other thing is I would say do not procrastinate. Uh, so if you're starting to do 1.4 on Friday, you're in bad company because most likely you won't finish it. You probably want to stay, I mean, Eventually, when you get adjusted to things, you probably want to stay about a week ahead or at least a half a week ahead on your homework. Uh, I put these due dates in, but these due dates are really like the last day you should be working on it. These are things that are dangling over your mind or something like that that you <clears throat> couldn't quite figure out or something like that. All right. All right, let me go back to a more comfortable view. I like the four week view because this gives me a, a full month ahead of time. Okay, so let me go to maybe like 2.2 homework. Okay, click on the homework assignment. This is what you got. This is chapter 2.2. Yeah, at this point you have 18 questions possible. The homework ranges any, anywhere from like eight questions all the way to about 20 questions, depending how easy the assignments are. Obviously the word problems section, they're gonna have less problems because they're more complicated. And this one's the solving equations or solving formulas. So as you click on this, notice the little up arrow came up. So that indicates that you can, if you like, go to a math quill. And there it is. And notice this one's a little bit more intense than the one that was on online as a demonstration here. Here's your basic functions, exponents, square roots, blah, blah, blah. But then you also have this function cap. So in Math 63, you do need the log functions. That's chapter eight, the ln functions and the e function. Okay, that's all gonna be for chapter eight. And the trig functions really for the pre-calculus class. So you don't need those here, but basic chapter eight, you'll need these and stuff. All right, so then we continue again. If you don't wanna go to the math quill, you can actually just write the fraction in five sixths 
and if you just want to make sure what that looks like again pressing the preview button notice on some of these it doesn't say syntax okay or not uh, just because this is an easy type of problem as we get into more and more complicated problems it'll, it'll tell you as you're writing expressions into it okay so we've got a few things here uh, we have a video and this will go back to chapter 2.2 and I'll go back to the problem that is very or somewhat similar to this problem here uh, it is sort of where this where this problem which section and which part of the section this one comes from and again sometimes the videos are maybe 90% of the time the videos are very similar to this to the problem at hand about 10% of the time they're not all right you also have an ebook I'll give I'll go to the ebook page so let me let me go to each one of these here but we'll, we'll go to the video and ebook more in depth as we get to it here in just a bit here so there's our problem oh we gotta select an instructor here okay so you have one of four over here that you can select from let's go with Aaron all right here we have this equation 3x uh, plus 2y equals 6 okay so if you look at that problem here x equals 4 3x plus 2y equals 6 that problem um, slightly different because that one is not solved for y this is solved for y but it's essentially a sense the same problem here y is equal to 1 in the formula you're gonna plug in the 1 you're gonna have to work a little bit to find out what x would be okay there's also ebook tab so let's go to that one okay and then again this is just going to take you to 2.2 just to that section of the textbook here so if you want to read through it and there's again there's one that's sort of very similar to it right there to give you an idea of the problem itself okay and then sometimes sometimes in this you'll actually even have a written example written down um, you know it's a step-by-step -step sort of problem not always but sometimes you have that as well okay so let's go to this here for each of the homework questions you do have three attempts for this problem here uh, after three attempts you are locked out so again try it one time if you're fairly confident in it uh, second time if you think you just made a certain mistake and be sure when you put in the third time you are you know that's gonna be the right answer okay the other option that you have, and probably don't want to use this too often, but uh, you want to you want to see if you can um, sorry, what I'm trying to say here. Let's see. Um, you can post your questions to the forum with other students uh, answering them. So that's a possibility that you can do too. I just don't want this to be abused, like every single time you're sort of slightly stuck but I want you to sort of wrestle with the problems themselves first and if you really really are stuck then post to the form okay so let me let me do this here let me post let me submit this of course I'm gonna get it wrong and so here's what you got is if you get it wrong you're gonna get a zero out of one because each question is worth one point and then wherever you got the problem wrong they're gonna have it's gonna be red in it's gonna be outlined red because uh, sometimes you have multiple answers here. Sometimes you have four or five answers here. Maybe you got two correct. Maybe you got two incorrect. The correct ones are going to be green. The incorrect ones are going to be red. So that you know that you did something incorrectly here. Okay. Uh, let me actually maybe put in the right answer. So, we just, yeah. so let's see. If x is 1, then we add 1 to both sides. Divide by negative 2. So this should be a negative 1. All right, hopefully I can get it right here. Submit. All right, there it is. Look at that. I got one at a one point. It is green now with the little checkbox after it. That's cool. So that means I got it right. Again, you can show the answer. You can have even a detailed solution as well if you like. If you do get it wrong, uh, you will still have the show answer, show detailed answer or detailed solution. That's going to give it to you after the due date expires. So that one problem that you couldn't quite get, like how did they get that answer? Uh, if you wait till after the due date for that, uh, so for 
this fri this Friday would actually be 1.4. So if you just got stuck on some kind of problem on there, uh, wait till Saturday morning and you can go to it and it should have these uh, buttons added to it because they'll be after the due date for that particular assignment. Okay, <clears throat> there's the homework piece to it. Let's go to gradebook. Uh, so here, and again, there's going to be lots of stuff here. Maybe I can't show it to you because I'm enrolled as a student here right now. Let me switch to instructor mode. Maybe this will help. There we go. Okay. Nah. Um, I'm going to show just a couple of people here. Sorry about that. I just want to scroll across here real quick here. So you will have online homework, online tests. Again, you have a midterm that's going to be here too and a final that's going to be here as well. But uh, underneath each one of these here, you would have your score. So out of 1.4 actually has 20 problems in it. And so it looks like a person is working on it right now and they have nine of those points done. The IP just means it's in progress, which means you have completed everything. And so this will change um, whether you complete everything, that's fine. But if not, then by Friday, it's going to change anyways because the due date will be gone. So anyway, then all the way on the other side is going to be all your chapter exams and then the midterm and final. So that's what you're sort of looking for. Okay, let me go and just take one person real quickly here, just to sort of see how it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like this here. Now above this, I'll put in midterm score and final score. <clears throat> but uh, right now, you're, just gonna, you're gonna look probably this way. As you click on your score, you're gonna look down to figure out what percentage on the homework possible and then what grade you got and the percentage from there and then as you scroll all the way down <clears throat> now this one is the grand total of points in the class so as I put in the midterm as I put in the final and I need to fix that real quickly here <clears throat> uh, this should all add up to 800 now this is going to be sort of like the end in the class the past due is going to be the one that you want to look at. The past due is the one that um, is you're going to be your current grade in the class. That's what you're going to be looking at. All right, and again, there's all your chapter tests right here. Notice there's no chapter one test, there's no chapter nine test, but the rest are up for grabs. All right. All right, I think that's enough with XYZ homework just to get you guys started. Uh, if you have any further questions on this, please um, don't hesitate to uh, email me. Uh, this is probably, if anything, probably the most more challenging part in the course is just navigating through this, but once you get the hang of it, then you'll be good to go. All right, so let's go back to this here. Whole concept of whether I should get a textbook or not. So that's that uh, tends to be a problem here so let's answer it right now and if you still have any questions email me here so the question of a textbook always comes up with this site there's an ebook already set up it's part of the class if you don't need a physical textbook so if you don't need to have something that you flip pages on hold in your hand then you are done because once you sign up for the course you have a free ebook that which we're going to go to next if you do need a physical textbook you can purchase one at the at the uh, Kalinga bookstore. You can go to the xyzhomework.com site, purchase it directly from there. They have physical textbooks that be given to you and uh, any other vendors that carry it online. Okay, so if you're if you do not have an access code yet with XYZ homework, then you do need to buy a new book. If you already have an access code, then it's easy just to buy a used book if you want to have the physical textbook because you don't need the access code. And just assume if you buy a used book, the access code has already been used unless they state otherwise. Okay, so let me go back to the ebook feature of the XYZ homework site. How do you get to the ebook feature? As you click on chapter one, the first thing that pops up is this little ebook tab. 
So again, this is, comes along with your subscription here. And so let's um, let's go to 1.4 because that's what URL will be starting off as well here. So 1.4 factorizations. And so a few things here. So this is the, the textbook itself, just like it is. Talks about factoring, talks about what is a prime number. Sorry, I want to get to the first problem here. All right. And uh, notice over here, on it says the factor of the number 60 into prime, product of prime numbers here. Notice on the side here, there are videos. So you have the author doing the video, um, and then any of these students. Also, you have uh, Spanish videos as well. So notice that it's reduced 210 over 231. If you scroll in your textbook, oh, sorry, made the window a little bit bigger here. Let me adjust a few things here. There, that would be better. There it is. Look, so example number two is really um, the video for example number two. So if you don't quite get the, the meaning here and how they do this here, then you can always watch a video. So this book was really made to for students to self-teach themselves. That, that was the concept of the author. The author said, I want a, a very inexpensive textbook. So this textbook is seriously 30 to 40 dollars as opposed to the 80 or the the 230 dollars that our previous textbook cost and the other part is the author said i want this textbook to be with the interactive piece here the student could sit down and learn the subject literally by themselves so that's that's the formulation of the textbook all right in addition to that uh, you have two things here that come with the textbook here. So this is 1.4. Oh, let me show you just real quick here. And so if you scroll all the way down, it's not just this section here, but it's um, it's the homework section as well. So right afterwards, there's your all your problem set here, and we'll focus on problem number one here. It says factor the following into prime product of primes and number one is 288 dollars I'll keep that in mind as we do this here okay so this is the ebook um, there's the worksheet version of the ebook basically all that means is you get into one full giant window by itself so as opposed to seeing it on the side here again the whole thing you can print it out uh, and again if you're gonna start printing this out all the time then you might as well just buy a book so what's the whole point of doing that then? Uh, again, all the way down, it is the exact same thing that we just looked at, and with the problem set all the way at the end, there's our problem set number one, 288, factoring the product of primes. Okay, if you do get out of this one here, go back to okay, where we were at. Back to the ebook here. Okay, this is where we're at. <clears throat> you do have something called answers and something called solutions. And so if you're on the section that you're on, you go to answers, and what that's gonna give you, it's gonna give you, hey, voila, look at this, all the answers from the textbook, all the way down. And so the problem number one, which is 288, and it says, um, provided as a product of primes, there it is, two to the fifth, three to the second. So all your answer is in front of you. Okay, and then if you still don't quite get it, then there's something called solutions. So solutions are not just the answers, but actually worked out problems. So there's 288, and what they did is they, they factor down to 12 and 24. The 12 they then factor down to 3 and 4, 24 into 4 and 6. So you see how it's the work behind the answer. And so there's all the work for all the odd problems. They don't give you the even ones, but all the odd problems 
for that whole entire section. So, so again, really, this is a way for you to really be able to take a textbook in hand. And as long as you're comprehending and reading it, uh, you should be able to see that. Okay, so there's that. Worksheet view covered all that. So this is the e the ebook version of things here. All right. There's also a little easier way, almost like to get to this point right here, and that is the other website we'll get to. All right. The Math TV site, and really the Math TV site is the same exact stuff that you just saw just now. But you don't have to log into XYZ homework and then finally get to the ebook. So let's take you to that site. It starts off like this. The only thing that you have to have to do, you have to go by textbooks. So notice right here, this is not aligned to your textbook yet. This is really just basic algebra stuff. And if you want to learn basic al basic mathematics. Look at that, they actually have courses ranging from, let me give it to you here. Basic math, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, calculus. <clears throat> and so if you want to, you can actually get go to the site, you can learn all of the mathematics that you want right over here. They have everything. But what we wanna focus on is the videos by textbook. That's the one that you wanna get to. Textbook that you wanna get to is this one, not the Texas version. This is slightly different here, but uh, intermediate algebra. And so now, notice that when you go to 1.4, <clears throat> and really these right here, these are just the videos of of the textbook. Um, they don't have they don't have the ebook per se, but they have the videos of each of the example problems. So if you want to get to the videos of the example problems, go for it. Way, way in the bottom, hmm, surprised it doesn't have it here, is the introduction. Let me see. Let me just check out something here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Another thing is if you want to, there's the student solution manual. You can go to here and there it is. There's your answers for each of the odd exercises in the textbook here. Now, again, you don't have any um, answers to the, you don't need to do any of the paper pencil homework, but if you want to try some problems just to make sure you get them correctly, that's what you want to practice. So the back of the book, all the odd problems, you would just want to practice them. There's your practice field before you get to the online homework. <clears throat> All right, with that said, um, one other thing I want to mention here, and we'll talk about it later, this is a little matched problems right here. <clears throat> I'll download it here. It says factor 72 into product of primes. Here's also another way you can practice if you like. The only thing somehow through, and they'll give you the answers as well. <clears throat> Two to the third, three to the second. And maybe this is another way for you to practice with the answers being on the third page usually, right here in red. Uh, also, as I point out later on in the course, uh, I'm gonna use this as the basis for my lectures. So you can actually see my lectures for these sections as well. So we'll talk about that when we get there. <clears throat> All right. Let's go to the YouTube videos. Now these are gonna be my lectures that I have done in previous Math 63 classes. In the classroom, so this is me in the classroom talking about these same sections here. And so if you go to YouTube, uh, I did this during last summer. So most of the lectures, uh, actually 85% of the lectures are from summertime. About 15 of them are from the previous spring semester. So I compile them all, put them in one um, slot finally. But we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna to go to YouTube. We're gonna 
click on the search field and click in math 4b. Go to this channel here. <coughs> Playlists. M63 lectures or math 63 lectures. And hey, look at that lecture, chapter one, section four, and there's my lecture for it. And so yeah, the first problem that we're gonna start off with is the first problem on those uh, matched problems. And my lectures are pretty much a PDF version of the textbook and those matched problems. I'll introduce the concept and then the practice problems are coming from the matched problems here. So it's a good way to for you if you want to. Yeah, to try those match problems and then look at the ve lecture videos if you don't understand a certain type of problem. I'm not gonna go into the video on it here, but just to show, this is probably gonna be a good resource for people that are, have a difficulty with the textbook here. Uh, let's go through it together here, let's see. Uh, the only section in chapter one that we're going to cover is 1.4, and again, it's just dealing with factoring. That's the thing that, um, it's a really a summary of Math 63, it's the, I'm oh, sorry, Math 61 from last semester, if you took it last semester. It is probably the most important concept in Math 61, so if you got to factoring, which hopefully everybody did, um, that's the concept we sort of take on into Math 63, into Math 15, which is pre-calculus, and eventually into calculus. That's the main focus of Math 61 besides solving an equation. All right, so we're going to just quickly review this, and then we're going to jump in. <clears throat> Anyways, those are the lectures. Again, it's my lecture, class lectures for the section that we cover. The only thing that's not here is Chapter 10, uh, which I will get there sometime during the semester. I'll put that in in just a bit here. All right, and let's jump to the last piece here. <coughs> Actually, second to the last piece, my courses. What I'm going to have on there is the, uh, this is what we're familiar with, what we started off with as well. My courses site, which is right here, and we already talked about it here. Uh, the only thing I'm going to have up here is my stuff, my bio stuff and picture. Um, this calendar, just a generic, not a generic, but uh, a general calendar for the course, the midterm exam, and once I know what the final looks like, I will uh, put the final on there as well. Uh, the syllabus says that uh, the the midterm is actually in P2. The course here says P3, and actually they're in both spots um, because there are exactly 50. There's 20, I get 21 chairs in one and uh, 29 chairs in the other room. So it's actually in both rooms here, but I will be there. The rooms are right next to each other. So when we get to that point there on the 21st of October. All right, syllabus is gonna be here, resource page will be here. That's about it really for for this site. Nothing, I'll po I really won't post anything else. I will uh, communicate with you guys with by email from there. Okay, and the other portion to the class is uh, <clears throat> the online office hours. I will hold online office hours. <clears throat> The title of it would be like this. It says Arcadia Hungi of Online Office Hours for Math 63. Uh, I'll hold them on Mondays uh, for the morning crowd. We'll go from 10.30 to 11.30. And for the evening crowd, I'll go 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. So we'll have two. Uh, you don't have to attend both. Um, but um, you attend them if you need more information or you have some questions. We will handle questions about the course, and then we'll handle questions about uh, the content of the course. So like, oh, Mr. H, how do you do this? We'll go over and sort of explain those things. Okay, let me just take you to the site here. This is called CCC Confer. This is the uh, California Community College sort of online web services. Looks like this. You're gonna log in as student. And once you log in as student, I'm already logged in, that's why. You're gonna click on something called office hours. And once you click on office hours, you're gonna look for me. So we have to go into next week. Next week would be the 24th. 
Let me see if it's there. 23rd, 24th. There it is. Okay, there's the, the morning time right here. Arcadia Geov Online Office Hours for Math 63. And just click on the Go button. It's going to have you register first name, last name, uh, email, screen name, and then uh, a passcode. And this passcode actually I will have to send to you. So that'll be one of the things I'll have to set up this week still. All right, and then that's the morning one. Let me see if I can find the evening one because it should be around here somewhere. Ah, oh, cool. There's the evening one right here. So Arcadia G of Online Office Hours for Massive 3, uh, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay, so again, this will this is a weekly occurrence. It's always on Mondays. So Monday morning, Monday evening, whichever one you want to attend. And you, if you see that they are you can attend both that's fine you can attend just one of them but we're just going to be handling any homework questions or any questions about the course as well <clears throat> all right with that that is the conclusion here i have nothing else except for just have a great semester if there's any issues please contact me um, i'll email you still the passcode uh, the passcodes are going to be different from the morning from the evening so kind of be careful there uh, the morning passcode will be different than the evening passcode. All right, other than that, have a great semester. I enjoy talking to you either um, through the office hours or communicating with you through email. All right, thanks so much. Bye bye.